I really don't want to be where I am on this. <laughs> I really don't. I, I, I want there to be some viable reason for for believing that the movie is a technology that is good mm -hmm. to retain. I just can't find it. And um, I'm not saying everyone has to be like me, uh, but I, I don't know. It, what good is it really achieving? And when we look at where the society has moved since the 60s particularly, but that was not new even then, but it definitely amped up the control vector via movies and um, uh, streaming media, mainline media. Mm -hmm. um, we've been moved in a generation so fast and so far, we, our heads are spinning. Uh, and I know this too, that the person least equipped to diagnose the impact of something on them is themselves. And so if you're still absorbing all of this, you you can't really argue against me unfortunately you just you just can't you you have to recuse yourself from the argument because you're inside the experiment and so you know i I've, I've stepped out for that reason and um yeah you, your experience last week um just only reemphasizes sort of what i've come to terms with which is that this stuff is so powerful um and certainly as christians we're not in control of it and even if we were um, like the best it's going to do is brainwash you into believing, right? I mean, it really isn't going to increase your, your, your authentic understanding of the faith. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's, um, well, and we came away from our conversation with the realization that if, if there were a scenario where we were to show movies regularly, um, quarterly, monthly, whatever it was, was, you really need to take the time to discuss it afterwards so yeah. the movie's an hour and a half well you better devote three hours post movie to let everybody debrief on what what emotions it caused and what um like the experience of seeing russia in its prime and then in, in its devastation i didn't expect that to be mm -hmm. something that i would struggle with emotionally mm -hmm. but i did and i needed that time to be able to say whoa that left me really uncomfortable Right. Um, right. To just turn it off and go to bed. Uh, it once you've pulled away, once your your desensitization has been reversed and you're more sensitive again, you have to allow for that. If you're going to watch another movie after this conversation, because you're going to be like, I'm going to prove Pastor Fisk wrong, go watch Inception and realize that's a movie about mind manipulation via movies. Take that into it. They're telling you what they're doing. Uh, you know, the Matrix also, but uh, the Inception really does that. Um, the other thing I'd forgotten, uh, I remember my English 301 class at Sonoma State University in Northern California, Rainier Park near Santa Rosa, uh, Professor Desi, an is, uh, Indian Muslim, uh, a fascinating man, uh, one who learned that I was majoring in creative writing. He said, there is creative writing that is not fiction. And I was like, okay, <laughs> whatever, dude. But uh, it's it's come home to roost on me quite a bit, and I, I do pray for that man's um, soul, honestly. Uh, the English 301 class was the class where uh, only English majors are in this class, and it's the first English class you take after your GE. And so it's effectively, all right, we're going to show you what it's really about since we had to let everybody else kind of get through those other classes because we're not allowed to really fail anybody. So we're going to punch you in the face with how to learn how to write. And it was it was very, very valuable, that experience. Um, one of the things he did uh, was we had to read a Sherlock Holmes story, and then we watched a BBC Sherlock Holmes uh, version of it, right? And he had us write responses. We didn't talk about it right away. We had to write responses to the combination of the two. And this was a classroom filled with a real variety of human beings. I mean, worldviews being what they are, it was a pretty diverse little room. And it was amazing that all of us in our papers, without knowing this, not only just didn't like the TV show at all, but we didn't like it for the same reason, but they were all different reasons. But the reason was always, that's not what I imagined. They did this and it was so different than what the story said. And we all found in the conversation that then was around those papers afterwards that um, we all agreed that even though we had imagined it differently while we read it, that was the value of reading it, that it allowed us to have diverse experiences that unified us as opposed to a unifying experience that divided us. And there's something in the medium there 
uh, the media ecology of that that is, is genius. And for, for Dusty to do that, I mean, I didn't really realize at the time. It's like, oh, yeah, I should, I should really stop wasting my time with a medium that doesn't really provide. Um, and that's kind of, again, th- what this conversation is and what my, my current struggle is. And I guess my advocacy, I'm, I'm not going to tell you this is about Christianity yet. <laughs> um, I mean, idolatry being what it is. Uh, but it is, if you're trying to discern what is good and what is not good, um, it's a lot harder to do when it's being pumped into you via a manipulation emotion machine than when you're going to read, listen, um, converse, those kinds of things. So uh, Philippians 4 is set up here, and uh, uh, this is probably worth looking at here because it really is a lot of what we're dealing with. Uh, Philippians 4, verse 8 and following, which I think I highlighted for you. Yeah, all right, where it says, you know, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So it's not like you just have to sit there and imagine Christ and his ascension all the time. But the question is, you know, how does meditating on the good, look at verse nine, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, St. Paul, uh, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Um, I keep asking again, what beyond the emotive high that I can attribute to any drug, including especially those that aren't good for you, what does the medium provide to us as a society, as a cumulative group of people, as a family, as a church, what does it provide that is pure, lovely, of good report, filled with virtue, and that connects with Psalm 17, verse 2, which will take me just a moment to get to, and it will not be on the screen for you, but, uh, you know, Psalm 17 has been my my bread and butter recently here. Um, should be right there. There it is. Um, let my vindication come from your presence, that's Jesus. Uh, let your eyes, Jesus' eyes, look on the things that are upright. Look on the things that are upright. So when Jesus looks at me, I want him to see things that are upright. Can that happen while I am watching things that are not upright? You mentioned Kira Knightley. I liked her in Pirates of the Caribbean. Then I watched V is for for Vendetta, and that's an interesting movie in its own right. Um, But at the very end of it, she is very much a promoter of uh, non-marital realities. And uh, so, yeah, so, so so I can't see her without thinking of that now, personally. And, um, that's me. Um, whatever things are true, dwell on those things, right? Mm-hmm. And I just, I'm just not sure you can do that in American film. I, I, I'm not sure you can. Um, so that's that's my beef right there. Uh, thank you for the question. Where to go? Where to go? Beverly. 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 Um, please continue seeking uh, to discern, right? You got you got lots coming in. If you try to keep it all, it's just gonna be overwhelmed. You're definitely going to have good and evil mashed together and have trouble discerning between the two. The more you try to say, this is good, this is not, the better that muscle is going to be. And uh, yeah, it, having all the information in the world at your fingertips is not is not a good thing. It, it creates existential crises, honestly. Uh, better to have a few things that you know to be true and to dwell on those with repetition. Um, in fact, that's what the Bible is, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, what's reality worth to you? <laughs>